When we're talking about area, we're talking about the amount of space that something covers. So for rectangles, on the outer part, I want you to write the formula area equals, can you please stop talking and write, area equals base times height. And then right underneath that, I want, also want you to write area equals length times width. We did so this now, in sixth grade. yes, I already said that. Oh. <laughs> now, I want you to make the connection with the letters being next to each other. Because we always say whenever there's a letter next to a number, you multiply. You multiply. Thank you. So this is saying we don't have to write the multiplication symbols by now. If you have a little bit of understanding of algebra, you know that when two letters are next to each other, that means that you're multiplying whatever value is being represented by that letter. And then I want you guys to go. To I can't do mine. Now, for the circle. I can't use mine. The area of a circle. Yes. Oh, I asked everybody if they had an inside. Ms. Garrison, would you do me a favor and give her one of those that... It's right next to the red book. Area equals pi shh, r squared. Area equals pi r squared. Shh. Here, we're going we're gonna to write a couple things. That's the Greek symbol pi. Did you write it again? Area equals what? We're going to do an activity involving pi, and you guys are going to learn about, about pi and what it means. Guys, can you stop talking, please? So area equals pi r squared. I want you to write above there, pi, look, it's like a squiggly line, and two lines underneath it, equals 3.14, or 22 over 7. Now, you're almost always going to see pi represented as 3.14, and when you're problem solving, you're almost always going to use 3.14. But I'm giving you the 22 over 7 because sometimes it's tested and they want you to understand that, that ratio 22 to 7. We'll explore it more and then you'll understand it a little bit more in depth when we do the pi activity. And then I want you to write the definition for radius. Write radius. And then put a little dash. And the radius is the distance. You fit it all in there. I'm not going to be able to fit it all in there. But you fit it all in that little circle area. If you need to write smaller, write smaller. From the center of the circle to the edge. So the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the edge. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Again, it's the distance from the center of the circle to the edge. The outside. We are now looking at trapezoids. So the formula for the area of a trapezoid is area equals one half times base one plus base 2. If you're worried about having to memorize that, don't worry because it'll all be given to you. And Well, in class, I'm not going to give it to you again because you have this foldable. You're going to use this foldable for this entire unit. It's going to stay in your notebooks. But on the star test, they're going to give you all these formulas. So don't worry about having to memorize these things. So from there, it's 1 half base 1 plus base 2. Well, now we're going to look at the trapezoid your go back to the triangle in the front Shh. so the formula for the area of the triangle I'm gonna show it to you two different ways we can say area equals one half base times height that's how it's gonna be given to you when you take the test or when you take the start it's gonna be given to you that way or the Arnsworth way, which I think is the easier way, 
is area equals base times height divided by two. Kind of like what we just did with the trapezoid, right? So those are the two different ways that you can solve for the area of the triangle. Then I want you to, to write or create an asterisk. Create an asterisk. And then I want you to write the height of a triangle. is the measurement. Write small so that you can fit it. I can't fit it here because it's hard to write with the stylus. The height of the triangle is the measurement from the base to the tip. And then write, again, you should be writing small so that you can fit this all in. It is usually shown with a dotted line. So the height of a triangle is the measurement from the base to the tip. It is usually shown with a dotted line. Now, the height of the triangle is the measurement from the base to the tip. It is usually shown with a dotted line. Inside of the foldable, and we're looking at the rectangle. So, I want you to take your rulers and using the centimeters again, we're only going to use centimeters. I want you to measure the base. Centimeters? Yes, so measure the base in centimeters. Somebody give me the measurement in centimeters Two for the base. Two and a half. So I'm going to write 2.5 centimeters. And then what's the height here? Four? 4.2. Four. 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 Hold on. I believe it's four, right? It, you know what? We're splitting hairs. It could be 4.1. 4.2 depending on like your perspective. We're going to use 4 just for the sake of being able to do the math, right? Now, area equals base times height. Every single problem that you do involving area or shapes, I want you to write the formulas down. Especially for this unit, we're going to be finding the area of composite figures where you're finding the area of multiple shapes. And so you'll start to kind of get confused or get lost. Every single problem I want to see you write the formula, even, no matter how easy it is. So we'll write area equals base times height, and then we'll go ahead and we'll fill in the numbers. Area equals 4, and I'm going to use parentheses to show the multiplication. 4 times 2.5, and a little mental math, if you're thinking about 25 cents, and you had, if you had 4 quarters, how much money would you have? A dollar, right? But instead of being a quarter, this is 2.5. So what's 4 times 2.5? 10, right? So area equals? 10. 10 what? Centimeters. Centimeters, right? So that's 10 centimeters. Let's go to the circle. Now, this is not going to be perfect, but I'm going to do my best. We're going to do an activity, like I said, that makes sense of this. I'm going to make a dot which, and where I think is the middle of the circle. That's kind of off. Let's try it again. We'll try it one more time. Better? So the radius in this case would be from that point to the edge of the circle. So label your circle that way. And then I want you to write an R which is going to represent radius. Write an R to represent radius. And then now, what I want you to do is, I want you to do your best to find that point, that center of the circle. You can do that by measuring across the circle and then finding out what's the middle point. So measure across the circle and then do your best to find where you feel like the middle point is. 
Who, and mm -hmm. if you care to share, JP, what do you think? So you think that middle point is 2.5? First of all, what's the distance across the entire circle? The distance across the entire circle is 3.8, um, 3.7. I think it's a little bit, I would say 3.7. Yeah. Again, we're... Hey, this is not going to be exact, right? Because there's some human error involved. But I would say somewhere around 3.7, okay? If you say 3.5 or 3.6, that's okay. But just for the sake of this activity, we'll say 3.7. So what's going to be the, half, the halfway point from 3.7? Look at your ruler and make some sense of it yourself. So try to find that halfway point. Put a dot there in the middle. Try to find that halfway point. I heard a couple people say 1.8, 1 1.7, 1 right? 8. Whatever you think it is, locate it. Be as exact as you possibly can. Put a point there. And then measure from that point to the edge. I can't see. Some of you are saying 1.8. I'm going to go I'm going to go with 1.8. First of all, I'm going to write R for radius equals 1.8 centimeters. Radius equals 1.8 centimeters. And then we're going to use that to plug it into the formula. Next step is we're going to write our formula. Area equals pi times R squared. Next step is we're going to start to fill in the numbers. So we'll put area equals, what's the number for pi? 3.14 times radius square. What was our radius? 1.8 square. What does it mean to square something? Multiply it by itself. So this is 1.8 to the second power. So we're going to have to do that math. 1.8 times 1.8. You can do it somewhere off to the side. You can do it on the left side of the page if you need more room. I just ran out of space over here. Do the math. I got 3.2. Two four. Two four. Right. Because if you multiply eight by eight, it's sixty-four. So you know that your first digit there is gonna be a four. So three point twenty-four. So now this becomes look at my step. Three point one four times the radius square. Our radius square, one point eight times one point eight is three point two four. Now we're gonna multiply both of those. Area equals three point one four times 3.24, do that math. What's that? Somebody said, why is? So you should be multiplying 3.14 times 3.24. A little bit, it's just two digit multiplication. JP? <laughs> What's that? Ooh. So, hey, here's a little mental math. These are both decimal numbers. What's an estimate that this should be around? Somewhere in between 10 and what? Nine. Nine. nine because this is, we're multiplying threes, right? Uh -huh. So if you multiply three by three, you'd get nine. nine yeah. But these are decimals, so you know it's going to be more, a little bit more than nine. I put ten. The, One, two, three, four. Four. Three, four. Thank you. So you should have got the area here equals, we'll say 10.17 centimeters. 10.17 centimeters. Let's backtrack with the circle. Because the circle, 
There's quite a bit of stuff to unpack. One, we needed to know the radius. Most problems will give you the radius or they'll at least show you the center point so that you can actually know where the center is and then measure it. We know that the radius is the, the distance from the center of the circle to the edge. The radius here was 1.8 centimeter. You might have got 1.7 or 1.6. Then we wrote the formula area equals pi r squared. We all remember that pi was 3.14. Then we multiply that by the radius square. When you square something, you multiply it by itself. It's not times two, right? That's the biggest mistake that students make. We multiply 1.8 times 1.8, we got 3.24. We multiply that by pi, 3.14, and then we got 10.17. Now let's go back. So there's our trapezoid. Does everyone see it? Yes. Do you think it matters which one is base one or which one is base two? It doesn't matter, honestly. But let's write down the formula. Area equals one half time base one plus base two. And then I want you guys to measure base one and base two. It, remember, what are we measuring in? Centimeters, right? So, I measured base one. What do we think base one, the top one is? I think it's somewhere around 3.5 centimeters. And then the bottom? All right, raise your hand if you think it's 5.2. Raise your hand if you think it's 5.3. Raise your hand if you think it's 5.4. I had a lot of hands that I didn't see. 5.3 is the winner, guys. Hey, we all have different eyes. The rulers are not necessarily perfect. There's a lot of human error involved here. So, let's fill it in. Area equals one half times base one. It doesn't matter which one is base one or base two. We'll say 3.5 plus 5.3. And then if we're using PEMDAS, I want you to write somewhere over here PEMDAS. On, off to the side. <coughs> PEMDAS tells us how we're going to solve this problem. What are we doing first here? What's the first thing in PEMDAS? Parentheses. 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 So we're going we're gonna to evaluate what's inside the parentheses first. What's 3.5 plus 5.3? 8.8. .8. If I add those two, it's 8.8. .8. And we're still left with 1 half times 8.8. .8. Well, if we do 1 half times 8.8, .8, it's the same thing as doing 8.8 .8 divided by 2. Because if I multiply fractions, then I now have to put a 1 underneath the 8.8. .8, and then it's the same thing as just dividing by 2. Right? So a rule of thumb or one way to process this it's a shortcut. If it makes sense to you, then use it. If not, then too bad. You could just do base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2, right? If that makes sense to you, then use it. If not, then just use exactly what we're doing. What's 8.8 .8 divided by 2? 4.4. 4. 4. So area equals 4.4 what? Centimeters. I'm going to be a stickler on units. I want to see all the units all the time. So let's backtrack. 1 half times base 1 plus base 2. Remember, it doesn't matter which one is base 1 or base 2. Once we measure them or we know them, then we're going to add them. We're going to evaluate or do the parentheses first. Then we're going to multiply the parentheses by the 1 half. Or we said you could divide by 2. It's the same thing. And then we got the area was 4.4 centimeters. So remember, area is the, the amount of space that something covers. So if I'm looking back at all these, if I'm looking at this, this represents the area. Right? This represents the area. When we're finding the area, we're finding out how much something covers. We're finding the area, right? Those are all the areas. Last but not least, the triangle. Go back to the... Now, if we're looking at this, at this triangle here, I'm going to do my best to use the stylus so that you can see it. If I was measuring this triangle, I'd, the dotted line would look oh, something like this. 
Right, that would be the height. So make that using your ruler on your paper. If we're gonna be technical about it, I would find out by measuring the base where the half point mark is. I see the half point mark is somewhere around three. I'd make a little notch there. So again, I'd use the, the ruler and I'd measure the base of the triangle, the bottom part. I'd find the perfect halfway point, which is about three. And then I would make my, my height from there. I want you to use the ruler to make those dotted lines. So what do we find as the measurement of the base? In centimeters? Six. six centimeters, thank you. So we'll say six centimeters. And then the height? What do we measure as the height? I shouldn't see anybody putting away. No, sir. Thank you. No. You measured 4.5? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that we know the measurements, we're going to put them in the formula. Area equals one half base times height. Or if we're doing the Arnsworth weight, area equals base times height divided by two. And then we'll, we'll put the numbers in, or we'll substitute the numbers. The base was six. The height was 4.5. And then we'll divide that by two. What's six times 4.5? Well, what's six times four? 24. What's six times five? Three. So what's... 24 plus 3? 27. So this is 27 divided by 2. So the area here is 13.5 centimeters. Let's backtrack to look at everything that we just did. Shh. We measured the base. The base was 6 centimeters. No, stop moving. We measured the height. The height was 4.5. We wrote the formula. We substituted the base and the height. We multiplied them. Those were 27. We divided by 2. We got the area of 13.5. So remember, we're always writing the formula first. Then we're substituting the numbers. And then we're just simplifying.